Joining us now for what brief and a review of some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Adefemi Akinsaya. Good morning, Adefemi. Good morning, Dr. Ruben. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning. Good morning. Adefemi, how are you today? Green. I'm okay, thank it's you. It's a green day today. It's a green day. And it's not only Independence Day yet. Can you imagine? How patriotic. <laughs> how patriotic. Well done to the two of you. <laughs> All right, so let's start with the world brief. Sir Keir Starmer has said that Russia started the Ukraine war and could end the conflict straight away. The Prime Minister has arrived in Washington, D.C. for talks with President Joe Biden at the White House over the ongoing conflict. Now, the U.K. has been providing Ukraine with storm shadow cruise missiles since last year. But like the U.S., it does not allow the country to launch the weapons against sites in Russia amid fears of escalation. Now, before Starmer's arrival, President Putin said allowing long-range strikes would mean that NATO countries like the US and European countries are at war with Russia, essentially triggering Article 5. Uh, if this is so, then uh, the, the change, bearing in mind the change in the very essence of this conflict, it will make appropriate decisions based on the threats that will be created for us. So those are very, very strong words from uh, President Vladimir Putin to the United Kingdom, uh, other countries in NATO, and of course, the United States. Well, staying with the United States, and it has announced that it's placing sanctions on 16 officials who are closely aligned with Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro following his disputed election victory. The US has refused to recognize Maduro as the winner and says it is convinced the opposition candidate Edmundo Gonzalez received more votes. All those named uh, in this indictment, in this Treasury statement rather, are barred from entering the United States and any property they hold there is blocked. Among those sanctioned is Rosalba Gil, who is one of five members of Venezuela's CNE, that's Venezuela's National Electoral Council. It also includes five judges from Venezuela's Supreme Court, which upheld the CNE's decision to award Maduro a third consecutive term in office. All of them have been sanctioned, as well as members of Venezuela's security forces, as the U.S. Treasury accuses them of being responsible for intensifying repression through intimidation, indiscriminate detentions and censorship. And then lastly, Nigeria stands to receive 589 billion naira, which is more than 272 million pounds, from eight partnership agreements it has signed with the United Kingdom. The deals commit both countries to collaborate on governance, climate change, education, health, as well as the economy. Now, it's signed by both the Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, Abu Bakr Bagudu, and also the UK's Development Director in Nigeria, Cynthia Rowe who has set out four clear objectives for these partnership agreements. They are to deliver honest, reliable investment, provide women and girls the freedom to succeed, stepping up life-saving support, and promoting sustainable economic development. So some good news in terms of what Nigeria stands to receive from the United Kingdom and for all of these different tenets of development in the country. Well, that's good news, but yes. the devil is in the detail. And also, even more for Nigeria in the implementation, once we uh, we sign all these deals, not just here in Nigeria, but even when we have um, visits abroad. Indeed. And then what then happens is what follows up after those signings, and right. then to see the real impact on the people. For a lot of people, these are just headlines if it doesn't make real impact. Right. To be honest, the UK-Nigerian relations has, has been quite strong in, in for many years, and so we've seen that collaboration, whether it's through training, through effort support to the military, through um, upskilling uh, our military and staff, very important, through mm -hmm. trade deals as well. We have quite a strong UK-Nigerian tra um, trade um, group and also Nigerians on board that. So it would be interesting interesting to see to what extent the impact would be. We have heard a lot of signings in recent times, but what we want to see is action. We want to see it carried forward. We want to see it implemented. And most importantly, we want to see the impact on the people of Nigeria. Great. Now to the US sanctions. It's, it's very sad for me when I see um, a sovereign nation not able to handle its own business and then get foreign intervention or interference, as some people might say, in their affairs. This is not the first time. The US has um, in, in involved itself in elections in different parts of the world. Right. And they're able to make their stance clear through 
measures of sanctions. In Nigeria, mm -hmm. remember very clearly when some judges were, some, of, some judges and um, high profile politicians were sanctioned and refused entry into the United States as a right. result of their conduct during elections. To what extent is this a deterrent? Yes, I mean, because a lot of people either do business or transact business in the US, have accounts and bank accounts in the US, mm -hmm. run, um, you know, visit or have family members in the US. And so it does have, you know, some kind of impact. But the truth is that when we'll, um, nations, uh, thankfully this is not on the African continent, right. but when would nations be able to conduct free and fair elections? Well, the people are asking Maduro to do very simple, show the well, show working, show us the see. numbers. How did you win? Let us see and let's put this to rest. Okay, okay two quick issues. Let me start with uh, Vladimir Putin. President Putin was on state television yesterday and he was saying in response uh, to uh, you know, uh, the plan by the uh, United Kingdom to give approval for Ukraine mm -hmm. to make use of the Storm Shadow missiles, which are British made and also in collaboration with the United States, that this will mean a significant escalation Indeed. in the conflict. And that Russia, we have no option but to, you know, deploy the appropriate response as it deems necessary. Now, what is the implication for global peace? The implication for global peace is that we are faced with a situation whereby there could be an escalation in terms of the war between uh, Ukraine and Russia. I had made the point before now that what has triggered this was, uh, you know, Russia buying over 200 uh, ballistic missiles from Iran. And now the U.S. has had to adjust its position, right. seeing that if Russia puts those 200 ballistic missiles to use, that could, you know, escalate the crisis and put Ukraine at a disadvantage. Now, on Wednesday, uh, Daniel Lamy, Foreign Secretary of the U.K., uh, the Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State for the United States, they met in Kiev with uh, President uh, Zelensky. Now, today... President uh, uh, Biden is meeting with uh, Kestama, and this is the big issue that they are going to decide upon. What is the uh, relevance for us as members of the global community is that we're likely to have an escalation in that Russian-Ukraine war, mm. such escalation that could result in Russia deploying chemical weapons. Right. Because the effect of these ballistic missiles is that Russia can strike Deep inside Ukraine, right. Ukraine too, if it gets the go-ahead from uh, the British and the Americans, can strike deep inside Russia. America. But, you know, the, uh, the Russian president is saying that, well, this is an attack by NATO, and that that is how Russia will interpret it. Now, as for Venezuela, these 16 persons uh, that have been indicted, more or less, by the American government. Well, you recall an election was held on July 28th. Now, before the closing of the polls, Nicolas uh, uh, Maduro's uh, government said Maduro had won a third term. The opposition, Machado, Maria Machado, who was the uh, candidate of the opposition, who was denied the, uh, the uh, participation, which brought Edmundo Gonzalez into the game, you know, led the protest. They said they have their own vote tallies. They released their own vote tallies, right. showing that Edmundo Gonzalez, that is the opposition, won. Now, the, uh, the government went to court, high court. The high court decided that, uh, oh, the result has been confirmed for right. Maduro. Results that nobody has That's seen. Cool. Argentina is in trouble, you know, because they say they won the result. Brazil, Mexico, all, about 50 countries of the world are saying you cannot conduct an election without declaring the results, without showing the vote tallies. Right. The High Court endorsed it. Now, America, playing the role of the international policeman of uh, democracy in the world, has now said, okay, through the Treasury Department, we're imposing uh, these sanctions. But I think democracy is on trial in uh, Venezuela. Right. Edmundo uh, Gonzalez has had to flee uh, for asylum in, uh, Spain. in uh, Spain. Yeah. And... Uh, 10th of January is when a new government will be announced. Machado, who is in hiding, is saying that she will stay back in Venezuela to see this through to the end. So Venezuela is in trouble within the region and also internationally. 
I think for us, the international community should insist on best practices with regard to democracy. Even if it's America that is leading the fight against the judges, against the security officers, against the uh, electoral officers yes. who abuse human rights and derail democracy in Venezuela. Thank you, Dr. Rubin. Thank you, Ayo, for your comments. Let's move on now to news headlines across the globe. We'll begin with Nigeria, here in Nigeria, with this day newspaper. And this day leads with the NNPC demanding the deployment of its crude monitoring team to the Dangote refinery, which is a sign of progress being made in the effort to supply the refinery with in-country crude. This day also reports that Dangote has agreed to sell the refined petrol in Naira. Now, with the deployment of this permanent team of six to ten members these people will oversee the production and buying back process let's not forget that despite this progress there are still unresolved issues including the price of the crude the price mechanism itself as well as appropriate exchange rate for the naira too so still a lot of issues looking at our uh, oil situation. If we move on to the New Telegraph, the New Telegraph stays with the Maiduguri flood. Its headline says that many are still trapped on rooftops with more than 400,000 households displaced. The article goes on to say that the official death toll is being compiled, but there are expectations of more bodies being recovered as the waters subside. Daily Trust 2 also leads with the aftermath of the flood. One survivor says his wife and five children are missing. There are also reports of canoe operators, to some extent, taking advantage of the situation, charging 100,000 naira in order to help a shepherd rescue his sheep. The Daily Independent now, let's take a look at their front page. It features a host of stories, but if we take a look at the bottom of the page, uh, we see the People's Democratic Party's member says it will defend its votes with their blood. Edo will take to the ballot box to choose its next governor on September 21st, next weekend. And the PDP have called on the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetoku, to immediately redeploy the Edo State Commissioner of Police in order to guarantee confidence, they say, uh, during the Edo State governorship election. Now, the punch is also staying on Edo elections. Uh, the newspaper is reporting on opposition's fearing violence as the PDP shun the peace accord. Now, the acting national chairman of the party of the PDP, that's Umar Damagum, he says that they didn't sign the peace accord because they had given conditions which apparently were not met. And they, they have been highlighting that members of only one party are being arrested. Their members are being harassed. And that contributes to the reason why they did not participate in the peace accord. Let's take a look at the Vanguard now. And the Vanguard has President Tinubu and King Charles pictured shaking hands. It's believed the British monarch requested to see the Nigerian president at Buckingham Palace earlier this week. Tinubu and King Charles uh, reportedly explored opportunities for collaboration in anticipation of the upcoming COP29 summit in Azerbaijan and the Commonwealth heads of government meeting in Samoa. Now, President Tinubu reiterated Nigeria's firm commitment, he says, to addressing climate change in a matter, in a manner rather, that aligns with the country's energy security objectives, whilst also affirming Nigeria's readiness to adopt global strategies for sustainability. Let's move on to South Africa now. And the Citizen a newspaper of South Africa says that the second largest party, the GNU, the Government of National Unity, has warned that the future of its co-government agreement is at risk if President Cyril Ramaphosa signs the Basic Education Laws Amendment Bill into law this week. Now, it amends sections of the already existing South African Schools Act of 1996 and the Employment Act of Educators Act of 1998, which provisions in the revised bill include allowing schools to determine and develop their own language and admission policies, but giving the Department of Basic Education the final say. It also includes regulating home education and banning corporal punishment. Lastly, if we take a look at the Guardian UK newspaper, now in addition to reports on Sir Keir Starmer's comments on Putin, which we've already discussed, being able to end the war in Ukraine at any time, the Guardian UK also features a story on the Prime Minister preparing to ban junk food adverts from television before 9pm. Online ads for products that are high in fat, 
salt and sugar will be banned altogether. Both measures, which are intended to help tackle childhood obesity, will come into force in a year's time. Plans to ban children from buying high caffeine energy drinks, which form part of the same public health drive and appeared in Labour's election manifesto, if you remember, are expected to be announced next month. But there we have God's in the United Kingdom. Labour definitely taking steps to protect against childhood obesity in South Africa. They're looking at education. I'm definitely in support of no corporal punishment. I don't believe in it. I was never beaten in school. Were you ever beaten in school? I hope not. In one part of the school. Oh. That debate is a big debate. Okay. I think, well, okay, okay. Let, me, let me not go into that debate. But basic education, it's beyond just corporal punishment. Right. And this just might mark the end of the relationship between you know, this government of national unity. And this had always been the challenge from the very beginning at FMI, the fact that yes. the, um, the ideologies were not... We're so far apart that right. it was difficult to see how chalk and cheese could work together. Right. But at the end of the day, what they said was that we're coming together to, you know, in the interest of the country, and so they had to form a coalition. But what the DA is saying is that, and what a number of critics have said about the bill, it's been passed, it's just waiting for the assent of the president, which he's supposed to do today. Yes. Now, the only way, I mean, that is provided for the president to refuse to assent to the bill is if he has constitu constitutional consequences, which would go against the constitution, and and he can ask it to go back to parliament for a sure. review. Aside that, he cannot refuse to sign based on political um, reasons. But beyond that, some of the things that they said is that it would undermine um, the Parents Teachers Association, undermine school boards. It would be a threat to um, mother tongue languages in schools. Yes. It might um, potentially, it's, it's almost a state capture, or school capture in this sense for the government, and that the government is interfering too much in the way that schools, especially basic education, is run in the country. So right. these are some of the challenges. They're saying it might just be that threat to this government of national unity. Let's yes. see how that would work with the DA and the ANC. Um, they, they have accused the ANC of taking unilateral decisions Right. And they did not agree to this. So it just might be that I would shake up this government and see if this um, relationship would work. Agreed. Okay, a number of stories that yes. are of interest to me. Uh, Kestama, mm. you know, you recall has been asking for the reform of the NHS uh, established 76 years ago in 1948. I see his reform and die. Now, they are planning to introduce next year, you know, a ban on, uh, you know, uh, adverts, yes. uh, you know, for uh, foods that could uh, increase the budget waistline of the uh, British. Well, critics are saying this may not have any effect. You may fix advertising, you know, put uh, an end by 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. You could ban it totally online, but will it make any difference? But the bigger issue is about the NHS, which has become unproductive, uh, collect with agencies collecting as much as five thousand pounds. Right. That's that's about that. The second story will have to do with something I saw in the Sun uh, this morning, page eight of the Sun, saying that the Revenue Mobilization and the Fiscal Commission okay. is facing a storm about award of contracts. There's a company that they say has petitioned the uh, president to say the uh, RMAFC ch chairman should be investigated for a scam involving about uh, 300, uh, I think they said $330 million. Oof. Now, the RMAFC's constitutional function is to fix salaries, mm -hmm. wages and emoluments for civil servants, for public servants. How is it that the RMAFC got itself involved in the award of contracts controversy? Mm -hmm. So this is the typical story about Nigeria. We are told that the AFCC has stepped in. I will urge Mr. Uh, Olukoyede, the uh, AFCC chairman, to look into this story because uh, you know government institutions and agencies should deal with their mandate. Mm. How, how has the RMAFC become a contract awarding body? Finally, we would like to cons commiserate with the people of Ijesha land and the people of Oshun State on the passing of uh, the monarch who ruled uh, Jeshaland, Elisha, for 42 years, yes. over Gabriel Aromalano. I remember him particularly as a secondary school student who read his uh, books on economics, economics for West Africa. At that time, we read Lawal. We also read uh, Aromalano. Aromalano was a higher grade. It was a HSC level, you know, but that was his contribution. And he had a publishing company 
you know, that uh, published over 100 titles. He was a PhD in development economics, but he opted in 1982 to serve his people of Ijecha land. And he had a good run. He died at 87. Okay. We commiserate with Governor Adelike, That's the people the of Ijecha land, and the people of Oshun State on this illustrious monarch who has passed on to the grave.